Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everyone. It is March 9th, 10th? Uh, 9th, yeah. 1995. And we are back with more 90210. Hey, everybody, what's up? Hey, oh, yeah, I'm Mark. <laughs> and I'm Carol. That's Carol. All you first timers can uh, get to know us, I guess. I don't right. know. Everyone else is like, eh. I feel like if you're here at this point, you already know who we are. But... You should. We're like almost to the end of season one of 90210. Right. So I don't know what maniac is starting on uh, episode 14 or whatever we're on. We're way past 14, babe. 27. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh oh, <coughs> still haven't gotten over those uh, sniffles. Um, so this episode for me, wrong pipe. Yikes! Was the worst, the worst episode I think I've seen of this show yet. The worst. It was so boring. More boring than when uh, Donna was trying to get a nose job or whatever. That wasn't boring. I mean, Donna getting a nose job was boring because it didn't happen, but uh, that episode was not boring at all. I believe that happened on the uh, Crisis Line episode. Whatever. Which was <laughs> super entertaining. You're right, yeah. Yeah, it was super entertaining. That girl got raped multiple times. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, you know, I want to be a psychologist or a social worker when I when I finish you know, school, so... It was interesting to me to see that aspect. And you fell asleep during this episode. Well, and I dabbled in being a rapist. <laughs> no, I'm that just, is so gross. I'm Don't even joking. joke about that. But I did fall asleep a little bit, guys. It was really boring, and it was really late, and I was really comfortable. <laughs> so it was just um, a lot of baseball. A lot of baseball. So... Any of you out there who like baseball probably love this episode. Yeah, probably. It was, uh, <clears throat> I liked the episode because of the the issues brought up about coaching and playing on a team. I guess we should tell them what the episode's actually about before we start critiquing it, huh? That's usually your job, yeah. My job? Yeah. Okay, fine. So, uh, the dad threw out his back, and he was coaching Little League. And he asked Brandon to fill in for him. I don't remember. Brandon and Steve. Brandon and Steve. Why does it take two of them to, to replace him? Because he's such a giant in the field of... Because... <laughs> so, there's three of them to begin with. It's his dad and then Steve and... And... Uh, what's his name? Brandon? Brendan? Brandon, Brillen? yeah. He's... Uh, <clears throat> they're the, they're assistants. Uh, typically, you call the uh, the head of a baseball team manager. They keep saying coach. Okay. And I, I don't know why. But um, they also mention sidelines when they're talking about, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> baseball, which is not really correct terminology either. It's the dugout, right? Yeah, and then there's foul territory and stuff like that. But uh, so there's like a first base coach and a third base coach. Uh, the third base coach basically uh, kind of instructs uh, people on base running after they hit the ball, okay. <clears throat> whether they should go, whether they should stop. The first base coach stands at first base and just goes, <laughs> Come on, Bobby! <laughs> hit it, Bobby! I mean, first base coach is almost useless. So they're a cheerleader. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Um, and then there's the manager, which makes all, who makes all the decisions. Uh, so there's three of them, and when he throws his back out, he's basically like, hey, can you guys, you know, take over for me? And he tried, Brandon tries to recruit Dylan, but Dylan's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's too, uh, all these parents, they want to, you know, push their kids and, and all this stuff and everything, and it sucks. And, and uh, what's her name? Andrea gets her one line this episode, when she's like, oh, yeah, there was this kid that was so good, Andy. And... They transferred to another, uh, like, they transferred out of West Beverly because it's too competitive. Wow. <clears throat> and they won the batting title and and were the best pitcher in the league. 
<coughs> so, yeah, weird. So they're specifically kind of against West Beverly because of the way they play. They're against, like, any of the Beverly High. Like, it's. I think it's like the West Beverly Little League group or something like that. I don't know. There's several teams all from, you know, mm-hmm. the Beverly Hills area. But, yes, that's what they're against. Okay. So... That's, that's like, most of this is just them coaching baseball. Okay, so I'm going to have to explain the episode then, I guess. Well, wait, I can talk about the the thing that's not baseball. You can talk so. about that later. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. So, uh, Steve is an asshole and a douchebag, like normal. Uh, and he just wants to let the kids do whatever they want to do. And he wants to win it at all costs. He doesn't care what, what it takes. So they've got this one uh, kid on the team who's not very good. And he's like, I want to trade him for whatever. And the, for another kid. And the uh, the president of the Little League Association or whatever, <clears throat> his kid is on their team. So he's like, hey, you need anything, let me know, you know, kind of thing. He gives mm-hmm. them all new equipment and stuff like that. And uh, Steve goes up to him and is like, hey, you know, I want to trade this one kid, you know, that sucks for this, you know, the second best player on in the league, basically. And he's like, okay, you know, I'll set it up and everything. <clears throat> and Brandon's not happy about it because he wants to just have a regular team. Right. Um. And then there's this one kid that plays third base who's a complete fucking asshole. Oh my I god! I would smack I this yeah, kid around. Kid's a jerk. But he, you know, he takes a grounder from Steve, and he's like, Brandon goes, "Hey, you know, you got to uh, keep your head up and everything." And he's like, uh, "He's like, yeah, don't talk to me or whatever." But like basically, it's very aggressive, but that's what he says. And I guess he feels confident because his mother is the the team mother, and she brings all the food. Uh, as Brandon points out, back in Minnesota, they ate, like, Twinkies. Uh-huh. Uh, but here, she makes, like, couscous and fucking, like, whatever, you know. Yeah, very She, she brings food. sushi to the, uh, to the game for right. all the coaches. <laughs> and, uh, water out of a bottle. So, weird. <clears throat> but anyway, um, so, they, uh, you know, they're, they're all, like, entitled asshole kids, and Brandon doesn't want them to be, basically. Right. And that's what's that's what's the main thing that's going on. And Steve doesn't care. Steve's like, oh, you know, whatever. Steve is an entitled asshole kid. He relates to them. Yeah, he doesn't see a problem. <clears throat> so Brandon finds out that Nat also coaches a little league team, uh, a rec league team, uh, filled with a bunch of like orphans and sad sex stories. Yeah. So he's like, hey, let's set up a couple exhibition games. Uh, it's got to be two. I don't know why. Uh, well, I know why. Because they have to play one and then set up the stakes for the second one. What? It, it only it works narratively in the uh, structure of the show. <clears throat> in real life, no one would be like, well, let's set up two. I'm just going to randomly pick two games. Right. So, okay. So the practice games, as you kept calling them, they're exhibition games is the correct term for this? Like, I've not, I didn't hear that term. It's it's the same thing. Okay. And the practice was not leading up to, like, a real game? No. And they cared that damn much? Yeah. What the hell? I, I assumed they were practicing for a real game. No, they haven't started their season yet. They're, they're just, they're gearing up. What? They're not in the same league. Why are they so invested? I don't know. What is wrong with these people? Okay, see, it's even stupider now. <laughs> so... So anyway, they beat the shit out of the kids the first time. I think they scored uh, 14 runs in the first inning, uh, the West Beverly team. Because Nat, as Nat points out, he's like, oh, they're not that good, you know. But, uh, you know, I just like getting, you know, it's fun, you know, to play and everything. The second baseman keeps making errors, throwing errors. And the asshole third base kid from the West Beverly team's like, Oh, look at this guy. He keeps calling him a frog for some reason. It's so, a toad. A toad. It's so weird. Right? Oh, the toad fucked up, you know, and, so, and Brandon's like, hey, you know, stop it. He tries to tries to kick him out of the game. He's like, hey, go to you know, go to the sidelines, you're getting replaced. And he goes, I'm not gonna he first of all he goes, forget you. Uh-huh. And then he says, I'm not leaving until uh, Coach Sanders tells me to leave. So uh, Steve comes over there, and he's talking to him. And he's like, hey, you know, we need to get him out of here. And 
the you know say, Steve's like you know hey, you don't need to embarrass him you know like in front of everybody because his dad's there he's like I'm trying to teach him a lesson and he's like oh I don't know Brandon he's like fine you coach the team and then he walks off uh, absolutely justified by the way uh, his dad when he tells the story to his dad his dad's all pissed off and he's like oh you shouldn't have you know made it a spectacle or whatever fuck you Mr Walsh right by the way like this kid's a total asshole. Uh, and deserves to be called out. I, I, I'd cut him from the team. If I was the coach, he wouldn't be playing. Yeah, for sure. He would be, he'd be benched. And then if he didn't change his attitude, I'd cut him. I think, wasn't his dad the one that gave them all that equipment and stuff? Yeah, his dad's the president. So that's why he feels oh, like no, 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 untouchable. No, no, his dad's, his dad's the, um, or no, his mom is the one that gives all the food. That's it? Yeah, the, the, the kid that's given gave him everything, set up the trade and stuff like that. His kid is a pitcher. Uh, he's their their main pitcher. Who cares about the self entitled little prick kid? Like, who cares about his mom's snacks? Anybody can bring snacks. But that's the thing is that it's it's supposed to point out how the kids like like Brandon points out. You know, the kids like run the team and everything, and the parents run the team, and it's bullshit. And it's true that it's happening a lot in sports, and it's. Uh, you know, in, in youth sports, and it's terrible. And then you got a bunch of entitled assholes, uh, you know, that some of them make it to to the pros, and then they're, you know, the most entitled assholes that just get whatever they want. And then people wonder why they get in trouble with the law all the time. Because they don't feel like any rules apply to them. Exactly, because they've never had consequences to any of their asshole actions. It's like, these guys aren't born dicks. You're turning them into dicks. Right. By the way, they get molly coddled and everything. Molly, coddled. molly coddled. Yeah, is that an actual phrase? Yes. What does this mean? I've never heard this before. It just means you know, like treated like, uh, you know, with a uh, kid gloves. Coddled. Basically. What's molly though? You know what molly is. Don't, don't <laughs> pretend like you don't know what molly is. I do know what molly is. Um. Anyway, so, <clears throat> so. Uh, he, uh, Brandon decides I'm going to, I'm going to help Nat, Nat coach his team. Apparently Brandon is a, like a baseball genius or something because he's able to coach these kids in the fundamentals in ways that, that Nat could never even dream of. <laughs> and right. he, he does recruit, uh, Dylan to be on his, his team. Cause he's like, you know, Hey, I'm going to coach them to beat, uh, these people. And then they bring in a ringer, Dylan. Who turns out to be a girl. And when they play their second exhibition game, everyone's like, oh my God, it's a girl. <laughs> like, like, have you never seen the Bad News Bears with right. uh, Tatum O'Neill and Walter Matthau? Like, a girl can't be... It's not like it's football. You know, if I saw, like, a like a defensive tackle that was a girl, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, she's probably not going to be as good as, you know, a giant dude would be as the defensive tackle. But it's baseball. <clears throat> it's like a girl could easily be, especially at this... At, at this level, right. uh, when they're you know when they're prepubescent, um, a girl could easily be as good or better than a uh, boy when it comes to when it comes to baseball. So, she uh, she's obviously, as they pointed out, a star pitcher and won the batting title. So she's fantastic and hits a home run in her first at bat. Yeah, she she's awesome. <clears throat> so, in long story short, they end up winning the game. Uh, the third baseman still acts like a dick. Uh, the pitcher who's, you know, the dad is whatever he, um, it's towards the end that, that kid that they keep calling toad is up and they think that, you know, he like, he looks terrible. So he looks like he's just going to fail. He's got a chance to win the game, but it looks like he's going to, you know, fail it, fail it out. And then you hear Brandon's voice (laughs) in this kid's head go, how you treat uh, your, you know, your team or your fellow team is says a lot about uh, who you are or whatever. So he just grooves a pitch in there to let him hit it, and the kid smacks it. Uh, <clears throat> it lands in right field. Uh, they end up winning, and um, they're all celebrating. They're you know raising this kid up by his, you know like he's on his, their shoulders and everything. And the pitcher looks at Brandon and he's like. Uh, yeah, you know, like it feels good or, or something like that. Basically, he's saying like, you know, I let him win and it's good. Like right. I let him have a, a moment. He's taking the right attitude 
from from this. Yeah, I mean that was a you know cute and satisfying end. It's mm-hmm. just a long, boring journey to get there. But the rest of them are like not all the rest of them, but especially at the third base, uh, the kid at third base is still an asshole. Yeah. Like even after Brandon's speech, he's still like, "Oh, he's gonna strike out, Froggy. You suck," or whatever, Toad, or whatever the fuck he calls. It's so weird. Yeah, you know, I'm glad it doesn't make sense to you because it didn't make sense to me either. And I thought I was missing some kind of like baseball related thing. No, like it was like a, a baseball insult to be called a Toad. <laughs> no. So, uh, you know, you go ahead and uh, you go ahead and talk about uh, the. Um, the B plot. The B plot, the only interesting thing in the episode was <laughs> Brenda found a um a lost dog or it found her. Like it, Yeah, it was following her when it she was followed running. Her, yeah. It followed her when she was running and then she like ran into it somewhere else and then it just, It was tearing up her trash. Yeah. It um it followed her home and eventually she brings it in. And she's hiding it in the garage because she's not allowed to have a dog. I want to point out that this dog has no collar. No collar. Yes, correct. And so she's not allowed to have a dog. And we find out this is because apparently she has been responsible for the demise of several dogs. Well, no. Just one. But she, like, she didn't feed, you know, one dog or whatever. It had to, you know, that had to go on to the parents. There were several reasons, like, she was not responsible with pets but one, one died. Mr. Pepper, she left to freeze to death in the Minnesota winter. Uh-huh. And apparently she's like, I knew you were going to bring that up. This is kind of good acting because she, you know, all of a sudden she gets like very like angry. And but, her eyes kind of fill with but tears. But defensive yeah. too, you know. And, and um, you know, she's like, I was nine. How was I supposed to know about wind chill and stuff? I agree with her. Where the fuck were the parents? Right? Yeah, they should have like, been looking out for the dog, too. This dog wasn't barking, you know, because it was outside. They're just like, oh, it's Brenda's dog, so it's her responsibility. She's nine. Right. Like, what the fuck, Jim? Yeah, because, I mean, at nine, she shouldn't even be home alone to be responsible for the dog mm-hmm. without a parent. So, yeah. Yeah. But, anyways, her dad is just a crab ass the whole episode because his back's in pain. Yeah. So, you know, which is part of why I think, you know, he's kind of a jerk with Brandon, too. But the whole time, the dog's always barking in the background, barking in the background, driving everybody crazy. He's on her butt to find a place for this dog. And she tries, but she can't. Like, apparently, the shelters are on there. If she took them there, they'd put them down. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, like, 90% of the, the, that's what she says, like, 90% of the dogs get uh, euthanized. Right. So she's, like, putting up flyers, and, you know, she's doing her best, but it's just not working out. And finally, figures out why the dog keeps barking, because she's left it alone in the garage. Yeah. That's terrible. Like, let it be outside in the backyard or something. Like, it's California. Yeah, it's not going to freeze to death there. Right. It, yeah, it wants to be with people. Like, I accurately predicted exactly what was going to happen. Yeah, it. It crawled in bed with Brenda, and then it was fine. It's a giant dog, too. It is. Like a big, bushy, gray dog. It looks dirty, though. I wouldn't want it in my bed, either. I mean... It looks like the dog on Married with Children. Yes. It does. Definitely. Um, So then at the end of the show, she... Oh, the dog goes missing from the garage. Somehow Runs it got out. out of the garage. Yeah, it got... It... it uh, it opened the garage door. It went It went out for a pack of cigarettes, but right. then it got lost. So she's all sad because the dog's gone. And at the end of the episode, she sees the dog just tearing down the street towards her. And she's so happy, and she's calling him. They're all at the baseball yeah, game. Yeah, at the baseball game. It's Willie? Wal- Wally. Wally. She's calling him, Wally, Wally. And Wally's running and running. He runs right past her to one of the kids who's saying, Rupert, Rupert. <laughs> Was it Rupert or... Edmund or something. It was like Rupert. That. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it was. So it's weird. Uh, they, Mr. Walsh, uh, you know, at the la- in the last thing, he's like, hey, has, has nobody, pl- has anybody not played? And the kid they're going to trade, you know, they bring, they he's the one that has, hasn't played yet, so he puts him in right field. And Steve's, Steve assholes like, uh, Mr. Walsh, don't you remember we're going to trade him? You know, he's like, that's next week. 
This right? week he's on the team. Right. So he's going to play. Um, cause it's an exhibition game. So he wants everyone to, he wants everyone to play. Make, it makes sense. Right. Cause you don't, you're not playing this game because you care what the final score is. You're playing this game to see, uh, you know, to work out your kids and to see what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, where they need help and things okay. like that. Uh, so you want to see everybody. Um, anyway, so, <clears throat> so he puts them in right field. So this is the kid in right field. He misses the catch. That ends up allowing them to win the game, and he's all he's sad, like he's in there. He just feels bad, you right, know. Yeah. So Steve and Brandon are there, like trying to comfort him, and then he cheers up because this dog tears towards him, and he's like, "Oh, Rupert, like you said, I thought you were dead." Yeah, and uh, so he gets his dog back. It's his dog. Why doesn't this dog have a collar? They're fucking rich, right? Obviously, they live in this this Beverly Hills neighborhood. That that dog. Would absolutely have a collar. Well, maybe it had a collar and it got like caught on something and came off its neck because it was loose. That's happened to um, my dog before. Maybe a cat stole it. <laughs> maybe. Some feral cat. Or maybe like they were giving him a bath and he ran away and they had taken his collar off. Yeah, I guess. Maybe they put him in the garage and he went out for a pack of cigarettes. And like, <laughs> This dog obviously has a, a propensity to just like. You know, leave and right. can and can open doors somehow. This dog know. is like a raptor; <laughs> can just open doors. Exactly. Ugh. But yeah, so that's uh, the end. Of, that's where the episode basically ends. So next episode, I'm hoping for some more drama, some more. You know, next episode know, they're going to talk about water polo or <laughs> um, gossip, girly things. Like, what the hell was this? We've already done basketball i literally spent about 10 percent of the episode just noticing how shiny brenda's hair was that's how poor i was it was very shiny though i wish i knew what she used uh she uses cow placenta ew that's supposed to be placenta is supposed to be really good for your hair okay well i don't want shiny hair that bad no no placenta is ever going to touch my head all right well next week we will uh Let's see. Next week, the episode is titled um, Brenda's Placenta. So <laughs> I guess we will we will take a look at that. You are such a freak. Oh, see you next time. Bye.